Good morning. Morning. <laughs> Hello. Nice and fresh look, day for it. And I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm actually with another Paul. And no, we're not out together, but he pulled up in the car park where I'm staying and uh, we got chatting. And he's here on a mission. He's going up the top of there. That's, in, is it Ingleborough, isn't it? Ingleborough, yeah. And he's going up to the top of Ingleborough because he's got a personal family mission, which I'm sure he won't mind me mentioning. Fill your boots. He's going to lay to rest his nan and granddad. He's got them both in his rucksack, and I know that sounds morbid, but there's two ways of looking at things. It also weighs a bloody ton. <laughs> he says it weighs a ton, so he's going to jog up there to get it done quick. No, he's, <laughs> his, his nana passed away a couple of years ago, granddad recently, so he's going up to, to Lady Ashes on Ingleborough, which I think is a really nice thing. So I thought I'd just mention it for him. Um, what am I doing? I'm going to go up to the limestone path. I'm going to find a couple of half lonely trees and I'm going to take some pictures of them. And if you haven't guessed, I'm in Yorkshire, not far from Ribblehead, and uh, there's a bit of snow on them there hills, so it looks quite pretty. And we're not actually walking on a path, where it could be a lot flatter and easier if we were actually concentrating where we were walking. That would make sense. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the plan for this morning. So I'm not going to walk and talk, because you know me, I'll be out of breath when I'm trying to do the two. So I'll speak to you in a little while, once I've got somewhere settled in, and uh, I've found myself a treat that takes me interest. Well, I've just come up to the first ridge and I'm about to leave Paul, but I've just been telling him about this waterfall that's up here and you can actually walk up inside. So maybe we'll catch up sometime in the summer and uh, might do with that waterfall and go climb up and cliff. Yeah, take care. Good luck. But I've um, seen the lights just starting to come out now over on the hill the other side. And just see it's going a bit pink on the top there. The light's just coming up over the top of the hills. So I need a tree and I've got one right in front of me which I'm going to play favour for to make it simple and easy without me struggling around running around trying to find one all I've got to remember today though is this limestone's extremely slippy so not to be going too crazy on it but yeah let's uh, instant photograph straight away <coughs> excuse me but we've got a tree nice tree got some nice leading lines running through the image and then we'll see if we can get the pinks in the background on the hillside in the snow. There's even a couple of little puddles there as well. So my bag's gonna come down and we're gonna get set up. And I've got sneezes this morning. <coughs> Ooh, dearie me. Right, excuse me, let's get the camera set up. Look at my glasses, terrible, aren't I? So I've made a bit of a decision and uh, the decision is I can't get the picture I want without doing a pano. And the reason behind that is, so get me, tripod ball nice and level now all I've got to do is set this up to give me a complete sweep tripod ball nice and level now all I've got to do is set this up to give me a complete sweep from one side to the other and the reason I need to do this is I want to try and move the tree off the center line and I can also go for a little bit more compression to try and bring the mountain a bit closer. Now I don't want the tree clip in the top. That would be a no-no. And what I do need to do is go into full manual mode. So I'm going to set my shutter speed to make sure nothing's clipping from the left of the image to the right of the image. And that's not actually level because the green line's just gone off. So let's try that. We're still not level. Why are we not level? That's exactly level. Let's just try again. Let's get it level around there. Something like that. Now we're level all the way through, pretty much all the way through. Let's go there. Right, I'm gonna focus on the tree. Tree's the important part. And it's not clipping the top of the image and we've got some lovely, really, really nice light on the top of the peaks. And I'm gonna start from this side because it just makes sense. I'm gonna start over this side and I'm bracketing the shot. Keep everything nice and tight. Bracketing the shot, I've got two second timer on. I'm just going to work my way through it. The first one I'm going to do, I'm going to take the brackets off and just take a picture of my hand. Like so. And then put my brackets back on and start taking the uh, bracketed shots. So I'm going to take five bracketed shots, one over, one under. And each time I'm going to overlap the image, about a third of the image. And the light over there is really, really nice. It's just lighting up the top of the mountain 
or the hillside. I'm sure they're mountains, but they don't look very mountainous. They're more hillside looking. Now I've lined, lined it up so that the hillside and the light is underneath the branches. I didn't want to actually shoot through the tree. I wanted to actually get the, the hillside below the tree, which is why I've come down low. And I've got these nice limestone path crag leading in from the bottom. And this might make quite a nice strip panoramic. Just very simple. I'll do one more further around. Always try and go past the ends of your images as well if you're going to do a panoramic. But it's really nice to light over there at the moment. So that's the end of that one. And I'm just going to put it back onto a single shot and take one of my hand the other way. I know I've moved the camera, but at least I can see my hand where it is. So that is the first decent shot. I'm going to try and get across the stones and set up another one while the light's still low and just nice and warm on those mountains. But it's quite difficult to move around on this stuff, even shooting that way because the, the light the other direction is not bad as well. You've got the light on the, on the cloud going over the top of Ingleborough. Um, so yeah, maybe do that. I'll walk over, there's another tree over that side and get a shot going the other way. But I want to try and talk to you about leading lines and why they're important today, um, using these crags if I can. So that's the first one done. Nice little panoramic to get going. And uh, I'm just going to enjoy today. It's going to be a nice, relaxing, gentle walk and see what I can find. Change lenses over. Um, I've gone for something a bit uh, wider. In fact, I'm almost out at 10 mil. Um, now I know it's making the mountains look a little bit further away, but I wanted to ex I wanted to explain these leading lines to you, and this is a good way of explaining the leading lines. So, as per usual, I'm going to flick this over onto video for you. I'm going to hit record. Remember that the top of the tree will be okay once um, the, you get rid of the top and the bottom of the image because the bottom and the top of the bottom of the image is cropped. Um, I'll put my rule of third lines on for you so you can see where they are, but they don't make a lot of difference in this particular image because I've got the tree slap bang in the middle. And I like the tree in the middle because it's a tree that leans over to one side. So it's making the, it's not a central image. It's still balanced to this side of the frame. So it's still sending over this way. The hillside, as you can see, is over in the background there, which is underneath these branches. We don't want to get these branches clipping. I know there's no clouds, which is a shame, but this is the important part, that piece there. And that piece there takes you right all the way through the image, right the way down to that mountain. So the tree's leading there, which is framing it. The, lines all these lines are leading you down through that way taking you over to it so the whole image is nicely balanced to lead you through the frame you look at the tree and you go under the tree and you see the mountain in the background and that's what it's all about that lovely little mountain in the background it's a little bit of a dead space over here um, but not a big deal um, we can live with that because this is the frame this is the image and when you look at all these rocky crags bits down here that's the bit that's going to lead your eye around um, so that's the importance of the leading line in this image it's a very prominent leading line it works very very well i'm going to focus i'm going to go to f11 i don't want to f8 i'm going to shoot one at f11 as well and i'm going to put me f stop over to uh, me shutter speed over to auto and I'm going to wind it down to underexpose it slightly because it's quite bright at the moment. So my histogram's now more evenly balanced. I'm going to focus just off the foreground, just down here, which can mean the tree and everything can be in focus at f11. And again, at ISO 160, and that lovely glow on the hillside over there. And it is getting brighter as the sun comes off. It's going to get brighter and brighter, but I still think it's a really pleasant tree, a really pleasant image, and a nice, calming, simple shot to be getting off you know starting this morning off and it is a bit chilly i might have put my other coat on in a minute um the lights changed behind me now so i might actually go and have a look over the wall because looking over the wall you've got this nice limestone path leading right out um i'll show you when i get over there just take a shot across the path but i'm gonna have to do it from this side of the wall probably because there's no way of getting over it from here Let's see what i can do see if i can do one from the wall
taken a shot. I didn't film it because all I did is I leaned on, I leaned on the wall. I uh, rested the camera on the wall, put my slightly longer lens back on and just to get the path, as you can see over that side, the path and those mountains in the background. Just a nice pleasant shot. That's all I wanted to just quick, quickly grab a quick one of that because it just looks nice with the light going up. Um, it might even be nice to get the drone out and have a bit of a fly of the drone while it's quiet and I'm telling you now it's so quiet just there's not a single sound not a single sound in fact it's that quiet I could hear my camera buzzing when I switched it on the X-T4 I could hear it just a little bzzz, little buzz from the electronics in it which is really strange I've never heard it before but absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful but I'm just not feeling it. I'm just, I'm struggling lately. I've been really, really struggling every weekend or every time I go out and I film and I do and you know, I get some great comments and some fantastic support from all of you, but I'm just, at the moment I'm struggling the last couple of months. I think it's the fact that you have to be careful everywhere you go and everything's hard to visit and you can't just go and relax and chill out. You know, you're on the edge all the time. And I think that's the problem, I'm not out just willy-nilly and I can see a cloud inversion right down there in the distance like I say always in the wrong place um, but it is nice being out I do miss not having Mrs C with me though um, because we do have a laugh and it's nice being together but yeah that's that shot done I'm gonna the clouds are now gone from up the top there which is typical I'm sure they'll probably be back later on uh, the lights obviously getting brighter and brighter but I'm just gonna take a walk around this path but not over it because like I say it's really slippy and I can't afford to be hurting myself on my own so um, I'm going to have a mooch down that way see if I can get another couple of trees because all the trees are dead and look pretty sparse so I'm going to have a mooch down this way see if I can find something else with a nice leading line to explain how that works and then uh, sit down on a rock have a cup of coffee I've got my coffee with me and I've got a banana so uh, yeah we'll do that we'll have a sit down and just have a bit of a chillax and enjoy the morning because it's a beautiful beautiful cool morning and it is cool it's definitely chilly but isn't that nice to look at it's more to it than just photography there really is there has to be don't just rely on the photography there's got to be the walk the fun the adventure the enjoyment the rain <laughs> yeah there's definitely more make make your photography more than just taking the photo God, this looks pretty sparse up here now though, with all these dead trees. Pretty epic. Right, so I found another image to try and explain the leading lines to you. Um, I found a little stump down here, there's a stump from a tree and a rock, just one rock that's been left sat on top of this path. Now I have had a little bit of a walk on this path, but I am not kidding you, it is lethal, absolutely lethal. I put my foot on a piece of grass just now, I thought all oh, the grass would be safe, and my leg just went down between the rocks because it wasn't grass on rocks, it was just grass on a hole. So I went down up to sort of, oh, I don't know, about eight or nine inches <laughs> on the, up to my knees. So uh, yeah, you just gotta be really careful, but it's so slippery, really, really slippery. So I'm not gonna be able to walk around on top of this, definitely not on my own. Um, I've got a whistle, but there's no one around. Um, handheld, I don't think the shots justifies me taking the tripod off my back um, but what I've done is I've got it in a vertical position and I've got a line you'll see the line in the image and I will I'll tell you what I'll put it over onto video for you just so you can see what we're doing let's just hit video right so we've got this stump down there we've got this nice boulder and we've got this line that leads you through the middle of the image now what I thought is this makes some nice foreground interest you've got a little bit of green on there as well so a nice foreground interest you've got this nice line that leads you through the image and it takes you to the trees and to the mountain at the back end. And if I just tilt the camera up slightly or just adjust my shutter, my exposure, is it adjusting? No, it's doing nothing whatsoever. But yeah, it just, it just takes you through the image. This is the foreground, mid-ground, and takes you through. And that line there in the middle is just a leading. Again, it's another little leading line that takes you through. Um, not the best example, but definitely a way of showing how the, the images are work. Again, I'm going to turn that off. And put it back over onto manual. And... You can shoot handheld, there's no rule, and there's no hard fast rule in there that says you don't have to and can't. So I'm gonna put my shutter speed back on auto, ISO 160, I'm gonna put, where are we? I'm gonna get myself composed, hold it steady in my hand, I'm gonna focus on the rock in the foreground, and it's quite bright actually in the dot. So I'm just gonna lower my exposure down until the clipping 
comes away from the left hand side. So again, focus on there, hold it nice and steady, two second timers on, deep breath, and then take the image. So we can do them handheld as well. There's no surefire way, it says you have to get your tripod off your back. But if it was any better, if, if the sky had clouds, if it had something a little bit different, uh, if I had to you know, take a better bracketed image, then I would have got the tripod out. But I'm trying to explain leading lines to you and uh, I'm trying to find them without breaking my neck. I'm sure I'm gonna find another one in a moment. They're all over the place, all over the place here. It's just finding something that makes it work together. And I just like that little stump and that rock on its own. There is a boulder over there, a great big boulder. So I'm gonna make my way around over there. And I'm definitely, definitely gonna sit down and get a drone out in a minute because you need to see this place. It is fantastic. It's so quiet. It's almost scarily quiet. I'm not sure I like it so quiet, to be honest. Ooh, eerie. Alright, so I found another one. Uh, I've not got a camera out just yet, so I'll probably do another handheld shot. But I'm going to try and explain what it is I'm doing first. Um, not the best of images, but it's definitely about leading line. So I'm just going to flip the camera around so you can have a look. Right, so we have got mountain, and we've got tree. Now we've got two trees in this shot. There's two ways of looking at it. We can have the two trees framing the mountain, and you need this nice epic sky, I know. And then you've got these lines that take you around through there. But while I was looking at that image, I noticed a slightly better image in it. And if you bring the camera around to this angle and you just have one tree in it, maybe zoom in just a little bit, you have one tree in it and then you have these lines coming from a diagonals. And now they're leading through a diagonal, taking you across to the tree, off to the mountain. So your image is now that. So you've got this one this way where the lines come in and go through the middle and it's framed between the two or you can have it just slightly over and have this one it's gone dark hasn't it come back where's the light oh you've got this one there coming in from this side leading over that way and this is where you have to bracket because you need to expose for this and then you need to expose for this and that's why you bracket the images you could put a grad in there but if you put a grad in it makes the top of that tree dark so i'll take one image for the top one image for the bottom part and then blend the two together so I'm going to get my camera out and do a handheld shot of this one and this one. I'll put them both up and let me know which one you prefer. Now I know they're not the best, oh, me stick, me stick, me stick. Now I know they're not the best of images. Sky is dead blue and they're very simple. Um, but again, it's explanations to whys and wheres. Let me just put my wrist strap on me stick before I lose it. There you go. Eh, dear. So unprofessional. Right, don't lose it. Because like I say, these holes and these crags down here are quite deep and uh, you don't want to be losing things down them. Now, I made my way across on the, I'm stepping around on this grassy bit. See this little grassy bit there? I just made my way across on the little grassy bit. Um, but these are these sparse trees. Aren't these fantastic? Aren't they good? And it just amazes me how there's boulders just lying around. And that one over there has definitely got my eye and it looks really flat over there. So I'm gonna make my way around the side back over there if I can get back over here without damaging anything preferably without damaging me it is really 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 quite difficult to walk on and I would not recommend coming up this time of the year personally definitely not alone anyway um, but keep to the keep to the grassy bits and they're not too bad oh, sit back on terra firma they're just so slippy I think different boots maybe even some of them little spikes if you can get some of them little wintry spikes on there it might give a bit of grip um, these boots just don't seem to be that rubbery but I do love being up here I think it's it's an amazing piece of landscape and it's 
it just fascinates me. And I've never been this far around this bit and it looks dead flat. This is why they call it a limestone path, I suppose. It looks really cool. <laughs> it's almost non, oh, I don't know, it looks a bit non-British-like. I even like that. I like the picture of all them trees. Right, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to find another shot and have me coffee.